Howdy, everybody. I pray you had a wonderful week. I got this piece of red alder from Rick Chapman. Thank you so much for sending this piece to me. Um, I just received it um, this past week, so I was very excited to get it on the lathe and start uh, pondering what I'm going to make with it. Being it was um, looked like the wood was split instead of cut, I couldn't put it on the bandsaw and, and get a good circle out of it, so I just went ahead and threw it on the rough, um, kind of missing that you know, beating a take from <laughs> turning these rough pieces. So I decided, heck, why not? Anyways, um, I had a few uh, cracks and, and a little bit of punkiness going on in it. Um, so I just kept periodically putting some CA glue on the cracks. I just always fear uh, those pieces coming apart. So um, I just do that for, I guess, peace of mind, whether it really helps out or not. I don't know, but... Anyways, whatever makes you feel safer, I guess, you know, do it. Better to be overboard than underboard, right? I kind of had an idea. Well, I did have an idea of what I wanted to make. I just um, wasn't sure if this piece of wood was going to be able to offer um, what it was that I had in my head. Um, so, um, obviously, you know, I made a, a hollow form in the end and the, um, the, since the irregular uh, top side that's towards the chuck right now, I wasn't sure if there was going to be enough there, um, to complete the whole piece. So as I'm turning it, I'm, trying to get the most, you know, out of the shape, out of the, the bulkiness of the wood, the stuff that I don't have to cut back. Um, and as I'm going, I'm realizing that, you know, I can get that tapered neck area, but I'm not going to be able to get a rim out of the wood. So at this point, I'm already in my mind, um, trying to think of the wood stash that I have. And I was like, I'll just glue on a rim. Um, but even though I'm thinking that I can add a rim, I'm still trying and attempting to make um, the most out of the wood, trying to get the most of what this chunk of wood has to offer. So, um, that's what I'm keeping in mind while I'm shaping it. Uh, that's why I'm going around the front and trying to, um, get its shape and going from the top side to determine how the bottom side is going to be, if that makes any sense. There's a part where a piece of wood had chipped out, so it left like a gaping hole and I kind of contemplated on leaving it because I thought well, that would be neat um, but I still wasn't quite uh, where I wanted as far as my shape goes so I was okay with with losing that feature to you know sacrifice it for my overall look um, I kind of spend some time on Pinterest and look at a lot of pottery and a lot of um, I homeschool my kids too so we uh, are in our history we study a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the architectural buildings and the, you know, all of the um, things that were made, you know, in the past Egyptian days and stuff like that. So it's really interesting as we go through history, seeing all of this stuff that we could consider art now, but was things that they made for use then. Um, and I think it's, it's neat that to try to incorporate those um, looks, but a modern twist on it, I guess. So I'm soaking all the punky areas with um, some medium CA and I let that sit. Um, I went in and ate dinner or whatever and uh, let it sit for a little bit. So that way it would just stiffen up those fibers. Um, cutting it one direction seemed to do better than the other direction but it was still really really punky and I I wanted to I there was cracks and stuff in there which is fine because what I wanted to do uh, over the top of that I thought that would be really neat so I didn't fill those cracks in a sense trying to make them flush I allowed and there was also a lot of small uh, wormholes in the wood as well that I didn't fill I wanted them to stay holy and cracky because the wax that I was going to put on it later on um, was going to make it look, you know, I guess aged is kind of the, the thought that I had aged or, um, you know, not perfect, I guess. I didn't want it to be this perfect finish. 
So I'm just trying to um, get it, those punky areas filled enough to where when I turn it and that glue helps stiffen those fibers that it would be um, smoother because I had a lot of feature, like I said, with the holes and, and the crack. So. trying to um, squish five hours of video footage from this piece into a short bit of time that's bearable to watch is pretty challenging. So I apologize for not showing all of the sanding, which is you know, pretty pretty basic and boring, but um, I, I do go back and forth. I'll, I'll turn in forwards and reverse uh, through the grit. Sometimes I'll go forwards and reverse with both grits, just so you know. I forgot, <laughs> it wasn't until I watched or edited the video that I forgot to put sanding sealer on there, but um, that was okay. It, it turned out just fine and smoothed right out with my DIY abrasive paste. The links to um, how to make your own and the products I use for my DIY paste, paste is in the description below, just, just so you know. I also made a video a while back on um, some tips and things on, and it's one of those things you just experiment with. Same with the um, polishing paste. It's you know a mixture that you just make and, and experiment with as well. And so I don't have a video or anything of that yet, but you can find tons of how tos um, online if you're interested in in making your own. So I'm flipping it around, and I didn't sand the whole piece because there was a lot of uh, stuff I still wanted to do um, with it without a finish on it. Um, one being hollowing it out, gluing on the rim, and, and I didn't want to go and sand it all when I knew I had to, a rim piece that I was going to put on. Um, so at this time, I, I already, already went through my wood stack and found a piece of um, lace wood that I had, and it kind of looked and felt kind of like cedar, um, but it had a lot of, uh, like, I don't know, the grain, and it looked kind of like weaved not weaved. I don't know. It just had a texture, I should say, a textury look to it that I felt that would go well with this piece, um, being that I was going to incorporate some, uh, I just used a jute, jute rope or whatever it's called. Um, I originally wanted to use leather, but I couldn't find the leather strap that I had. So the rope tended to, I, I think it ended up looking better, giving it a little bit more of a added texture to the piece. I am looking to get um, a hollower that I could get into, you know, larger pieces. So if you guys want to comment below on if you have a hollowing system that you really, really like, I think that would be something worth uh, saving and investing in um, because I enjoy doing these hollow forms, these these pieces, even though they're a little on the tedious side. I think that's what the challenge is to do them is because um, they do take a little bit of time and, and patience. So if you guys have any hollowing systems that you really enjoy, just put them, you know, put the name of them in the uh, comment section if you don't mind, and I'll take a look at them. Being the only tool I can get in here was my um, carbides. It, you know, tends to not really care for punky wood and you don't really get a nice um, cut. At least I don't. Maybe something I'm doing wrong. I'm not sure. Um, I just decided I was going to go ahead and fill it, the inside, the punky, real torn out grain with epoxy. And then after it dries, later go back and, and sand it smooth and then put whatever finish and it did work out I was happy and plus it helped to uh, keep that crack it was kind of moving around on me that that crack in there because it went all the way from the bottom to the rim so the epoxy helped kind of just hold that together uh, better from the inside at least it made me feel better <laughs> so I'm just using my hand to smear it around because I couldn't get my brush in there now I'm just making my lines on uh, where the different uh, textures, I should say, the, the wax and then the wood, 
was going to meet to make it look like they were joined together with the rope. So I'm doing, they're just 14 lines, and then I take my um, calipers I have to make the four holes uh, even to um, so I can get the X pattern with the rope. I use a punch because the wood was kind of soft, so I feared, you know, my drill bit, you know, running off and causing all kinds of more problem-solving issues for me. I didn't have a really small bit to do sanding with, so I just used, this is one of those, um, it's like an orange colored stone bit. Uh, if you see there's smoke coming off it, it likes to burn wood more than anything, but it really helped to sand down those holes and kind of give them more of a um, tapered look, I guess, than that, you know, regular flat drilled out look. So that's what I used for those. Again, I'm using the Total Boat 2 to 1 Fast um, Hardener to glue on my rim. I didn't turn, finish turning this, this night that I had put this on. I went ahead and let it sit overnight. I had to be sure to constantly blow the um, 
stuff out of the holes. So if you don't have an air compressor, they do sell air duster in a can. Um, and I've have used that before too. It works really well too. So I'm only applying the um, polish paste on the top half of it because the larger section there that I'm not applying it, I'm going to be putting a wax. And I was afraid that the colored wax that I'm going to use wasn't going to stick with all that stuff on there. So um, I just was sure to uh, avoid getting it on the area. And then um, same with the OB Shine Juice. I just took denatured alcohol afterwards and wiped down the area. Now when applying OB Shine Juice, um, what gives the real good shine is it's a friction polish. So you want to f build up heat um, on it. And then um, every coat, because the denatured alcohol re-solidifies the shellac, it will, um, I guess, blend, build, I should say, would be a better word. So I had um, someone ask me about how do I apply my finish. I, you know, they'll use the OB Shine Juice after all of the you know abrasive paste and the polishing wax and then when you apply the obi shine juice you want you want your fingers need to get hot like <laughs> you're going to want to move your hand cuz it's it's getting warm so the faster you can safely obviously turn it while applying the finish some pieces are just out of balance and i i can't get it going fast enough or you just have to you know wait a little longer by by holding in the same spot to build up that friction, that heat. Um, cause it kind of, I guess, burnishes it in. I don't know the technical. I'm sure there's, um, those of you out there who know what that would be, but just to let you know this, um, this metallic wax, I put the link to all the colors in the description below. They, they come in several colors. Now Hobby Lobby, my Hobby Lobby only has three colors, the teal. This is called black, but it looks obviously silver and the gold. Um, and Amazon has them for $6.98. And if you have Prime, it's free shipping. Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby has them for $6.99, at least here in Florida they do. And you can use your 40% off coupon. So you decide whichever one would be better for you. Um, if you're going to order several colors, obviously in Hobby Lobby, you can only use one coupon per, you know, item. Uh, at a time unless you bring a whole family in if you want a, <laughs> a bunch of colors but um I put the links to all the colors below and they come in all kinds of colors like coral and I was amazed I was excited so I loaded my card up with them and um I'll probably be purchasing uh, several of those colors or at least they're on my wish list anyway the wax it it's hard to explain it's an embellishing wax and if anybody's ever used it before you you kind of can expect but it hardens fairly quickly. So it's a rub on. Um, and as you rub it on, it, it hardens. And as the, f as it sits on the piece, the longer it hardens. So fresh putting it on, even though it's dry, you want to be careful because even when I was sewing the string in it, um, it raked just a little bit, you know, it made little marks and I just went back over with the, with the wax and it, you know, it, filled them up fine. You just want to go over it and make sure you got a good coat because you will see spots of wood where it just, you know, didn't want to adhere at first, but it builds really nice and it's quick. So it's right up my alley. Um, as far as a, you know, decorative, I did not put, um, any finish over top of it. So I didn't spray it with lacquer or anything. I did do a test piece and spray it with lacquer to see if the lacquer would stick to it. And it did without it getting cloudy. So if you wanted to, you know, do a lacquer over the whole piece when it's done, just test a small piece first, make sure the lacquer you're using will be fine. Um, the lacquer I used worked just fine. I just did not want to put a shiny finish on it. So that's why I didn't. Um, shellac, I did try to use shellac or the OB Shine Juice, I'm sorry, over a test piece and it does cause it to come off. So be cautious with that. It's, you know, it's a waxy finish. So just, I guess, keep in mind, I was surprised that the lacquer stuck to it, um, but it did. And it, and it did create a shine without that haze. So just so you know, it, you know, experiment with whatever finish before you do a final product. So that way you, you know, have an idea of how it's going to react. The way I sewed the string in is I just took a piece of wire I had uh, laying around a real fine wire, wrapped it around the end of the rope. And it was still tedious. There was 
a lot more footage of me sewing, but I obviously had to cut it out because it would be like 90% of the video. <laughs> it took a long time, but it was still fun and I enjoyed watching it all kind of, my vision kind of come together as I was doing it and it was really exciting and this project was fun and challenging and it really pushed me to just try things and um, I'm glad I was able to get this video edited for you because I just finished this the other day so I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, you know, comment below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. And um, Oh, I just tied this off in the inside and then put some uh, CA glue just to hold it um, so it wouldn't get worked loose by, you know, being touched or picked up. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, blew it all off and set it out to take pictures. But I hope you guys enjoyed and I pray you have a blessed weekend and we'll see you next week.